It's the 1930s. The Great Depression has only just ended. Indiana limestone is a massive industry. Cut the rock, build the country. Statues, skyscrapers, infrastructure. But people are bored and sports are the national pastime. Baseball is big. Don't like baseball? Then boxing is where it's at. What a hit. But what's there for the people who want to see something but can't afford the entry price? Enter comics. Boom. It was a boom. A massive boom. All the entertainment from every inch of the human imagination drawn in beautiful ink for a dollar. Actually, a quarter. No, make that a dime. Comics were everywhere. So was boxing. So was limestone. What do the three have in common? Well, let me tell you about Joe Palooka. Hello and welcome. My name is Garrett Van Team. I'm a filmmaker and history buff, and behind me you'll notice a very peculiar limestone statue. That is Joe Palooka. This statue was built in honor of the 1930s comic book character, first illustrated by Pennsylvania artist Ham Fisher. Joe started as a weekly newspaper comic, but quickly grew in popularity, achieving national syndication before receiving his own series of monthly issued comic book. Within three years, he had a radio show, within five, a feature film. In fact, there was even a remake of the original, followed by ten successful features. You heard me right, ten. And let me tell you, Nobby Walsh, Joe's boxing coach, is one of my all-time favorite cinematic characters. What a face. The brow of a genius with sharp chiseling features. But that's not the end of the story, or even the most interesting part. For that, we need to go to 1939. The Nazis declare war on everyone. They have a few allies, Italy, Japan, but otherwise, war, lots of war. It's one of the most grotesque periods of recent world history. The Jewish population is ransacked, persecuted. America stays out of it for two years, too many years. It's now 1940, millions are dead. Europe is devastated on the verge of complete and utter failure in the face of raw evil. America doesn't seem to care. But Joe Palooka does. In a historic issue, Fisher commands the pen like a sword and declares through the words of Joe, speaking to Nobby, that he must decline a new fight. Simply put, he's going to enlist. And so, just like that, Joe Palooka becomes the first comic book character in U.S. history to join the war effort, a full year before the U.S. government would itself declare war on Japan following the attack on Pearl Harbor. But Joe went first, and he took the nation's readers with him. Every single week, new adventures following his exploits against the Third Reich would reach the top of the sales charts. Palooka punches Nazis, and Americans wanted him to. The response to Joe enlisting was a five-year popularity streak that would see his comic become the most popular sports cartoon ever. Let me say that again, ever. And it sent a clear message to the US government that we wanted the war over, and like Palooka, we wanted to help. In celebration of that sentiment, this statue was erected in 1948 by the Indiana Limestone Company. Reaching a height of 10 feet tall and weighing over 20,000 pounds, it remains to this day a reminder to all who look upon it just what kind of change can be wrought simply by choosing to stand. When I discovered all this for myself, it was because of this statue. It captured my attention and so quickly did the story behind it as well. Like Joe, I think we should all try and stand for something, even if we're one day forgotten for it. Today, I'm standing for history, that often forgotten or lost history that stands on every street in every town, no matter how small. If you made it this far, thank you for watching, really. And I'll see you next time.